Good day, everyone. Today we continue in our original series. Now on our seventh lesson on mission and mystery. Before we continue, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We thank you for another day you given to us. We commit you, Lord, this day. I commit you, Lord God, myself. You need to anoint me, your mouthpiece, as I share your word today. And to those who are watching this video, I thank you, Lord, to, to open up their hearts, their understanding. They'll know you more and will be inspired to be involved in missions ministries. Holy Spirit, you are our ultimate teacher. Continue to teach us all truths, convict us, inspire us, and guide us. As we press on in obeying God, in finishing the call to missions ministries. We commit to the rest of our time in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In our the same devotional series, missions ministries, we are still in our same verse. It's written in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, as saying, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Then the end will come. As a review, we learned that in the missions, in missions, there is that need in the mobilization of team leadership, in intentional corporate praying, with a sensitivity in the Holy Spirit to serve and obey the great commandments, the intention in finishing the great commission, toward outreach in the specific places of community with the necessity of local churches having the scope of missions expansion. Then, we do various ministries with the model chief cornerstone of ministry that is Jesus Christ into the inspired nature of ministry the service, needed motivation of ministry is love, the inclusive measure of ministry is sacrifice, the sustained authority of ministry is mission, the threaded purpose of ministry is the glory of God, and the required tools of ministry is the word of God and prayer, with imputed privilege of ministry is growth. In our, in our seventh lesson, exclusive administrator of ministry is the Holy Spirit. As written in John chapter 16, verse 13 to 15, as saying, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truths, he will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he makes known to you. All that belongs to, father, to the Father is mine. That's why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. First, baptism in the Holy Spirit. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but pray for the gift of my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days he will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around, around him and asked, Lord, are you at the time going, this time to go in to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates the father set his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria until the ends of the earth. As written in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. Taken. Gifts of the Holy Spirit for work in ministry. As written in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 11. As saying, Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to the common good. To one is given to the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith in the same Spirit. To another, gift of healing by one by that one Spirit. To another, miracles powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinction between Spirits. To another, speaking different kind of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And He distributes them to each one, just as He determines. Third, Fruit of the Holy Spirit for character in ministry. As written in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25, as saying, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Then fully by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Also, as we tell in Jude chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, as saying, But you, dear friends, by building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Let us take note. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and listen to us as we continue to watch the video and review this video. Meditate and apply the scriptures, verses about the explosive and strengthened of ministry is the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit that will be with us and lives in us. Empower us, Holy Spirit, as we press on leading, preaching the gospel, and make disciples of our people so that many more people like us will be baptized by you. Receive your gift for ministry and your fruitful character in ministry. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a blessed day. Keep safe in Jesus with the power of the Holy Spirit. Till next time, to God be the glory. Good day everyone. Today we will continue our 8th lesson on the Divisional Series, Mission Tendencies. As we get started, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for this another day given to us. We commit to Lord God this 8th lesson, our last lesson Lord on the Divisional Series, Missions Ministries. Father God, I commit to you, Lord, myself, for you to anoint me, your mouthpiece. As I share your word, I pray for boldness. And I am a Lord to those who are watching this video, continue, Lord, to get them understanding, open up their minds, convict their hearts, that they will understand more of you. And they will be obedient, Lord, to your call for us in the mission ministry. Holy Spirit, you are ultimate teacher today. Continue to teach us all truth. Convict us, inspire us, and guide us. As we press on, being obedient to the call of the missions ministers. We commit you to this over time. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Now the missional series of missions ministers. We're still in our theme verse. As we turn in Matthew 24, verse 14, as saying, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Then the end will come. As a review, we learn that in missions, there is that need in the mobilization of team leadership, in intentional corporate training, with a sensitivity in the Holy Spirit, to serve and obey the great commandments, an intention in finishing the Great Commission toward outreach into specific places and communities with a necessity of local churches having that scope of mission expansion. Then, we do various ministries with the model chief cornerstone of ministry that is Jesus Christ into the inspired nature of ministry that is service. Needed motivation of ministry is love. Inclusive mission of ministry is sacrifice. Sustain authority of ministry is a mission. Threaded purpose of ministry is the glory of God. 
required tools of ministry is the word of God and prayer. With the imputed privilege of ministry is growth and exclusive. And the spirit of ministry is the Holy Spirit. Now, the eighth lesson today on sustained character in ministry is Christ likeness. As written in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, as saying, Be your friends. Now we are children of God that we will be, he will be, has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. First, the ultimate goal of ministry. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to give his people a word of service that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach him in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become a true, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. As written in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. Second, everything works for good toward conformity of, of Christ's likeness. As written in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30, as saying, And we know that all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to conform to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined is so called, those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Third, glory to glory toward Christ like. As written in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, as saying, Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Also as written in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 6, as saying, We know that we have come to know Him, if we keep His commands. Whoever says, I know Him, but does not do what command is a liar. That those is not in that person, but if anyone obey His word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in Him. Whoever claims to live in Him must live as Jesus did. Let us take note. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and message to us as we continue to watch this video and review this video. Meditate and apply the devotional scriptures about the sustained character of ministry is Christ's likeness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the transforming power of the Spirit toward Christ's likeness. Empower us, Holy Spirit, as we press on living, preaching the gospel, and make disciples to all nations, that many more people like us will have the ultimate goal of ministry. And everything work for good, from glory to glory, toward Christ likeness. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a blessed day. Keep setting Jesus with a character toward Christ likeness. Till next time, thank you for watching. To God be the glory.